Well, my dad, uh, he rode one um, in Oklahoma with uh, Dwayne Stamper, who was a horse trainer and uh, has, became a family friend. But he, he did that and he came home and he said, I had more fun than I've ever had in my entire life. I got on a cutting horse and I fell off twice. And, <laughs> and again, I didn't even know what a, a cutting horse was. I thought it was some kind of rodeo thing. And he, he bought some and he located them uh, with a trainer in Utah named Lawson Hadlock. And he brought the whole family up to Lawson's place and had us work this, this horse on, on flag. I didn't even know what that meant at the time. And the horse's name was Docs Tom Tari, uh, old gelding that won over 100,000. And uh, he'd, he'd been with the family ever since that moment until he passed. But um, got, on a, got on a cutting horse, and then I understood why he had so much fun. I mean, it was, I've never tried crack, but <laughs> I mean, it, it was an instant addiction. Um, wow. It is so fun, it's like, it's like riding a tiger. I don't know how else to, how else to put it. And I've, I've had a lot of fun experiences through this recession and, and tightening of, of the industry and economy. Um, there has been, you know, a top loaded breeding to a select few stallions. And hey, I'm a laissez-faire capitalist. So whatever, whatever the market wants to do, I, I don't want to have regulation. But that being said, shrinking of a gene pool to narrowing of of the economics within an industry is negative. I mean, I can't say it any other way than that. I hope that people can be educated in the decisions they make rather than just, you know, following trends. Um, and that takes that takes time and effort and people really studying and being up to speed on things. I'm being very um, general when I'm saying those things because it's your money, it's your horse, you should yeah. be able to do whatever you want. Yeah. Um, but I just hope people know that there's, there's real consequences to decisions. Right. As a whole, I will tell you that my experience, cutting horse breeders are exactly what you just laid out. They're, they're, they're making decisions because they want that freak. And versus the thoroughbred industry, that they make their decisions based on data and statistics and facts. They would rather have a $100,000 stakes place that they have a certain degree of um, certainty that that's what they're going to get versus I'm only going to breed to have a Kentucky Derby winner. You know, so cutting horse people, for the most part, they're breeding because they want the NCHA Futurity winner and that's what they want and they're going to go through a lot of cash <laughs> <laughs> until they get that. So that's fascinating. Why do you think it's so different in that way, in the way people approach breeding in the two industries? Well, again, my opinion. Um, for a lot of people in the racehorse business, I don't know how to say this other than uh, the way I'm going to say it, they're commodities. Um, it's, they're one step removed. They're one step removed. Um, they're making their decisions based upon trying to have a gain versus a passion. And there's lots of racehorse people that are passionate. Um, lots of billionaires that spend lots uh -huh. of money that they're not going to get any return. But for the bulk of the industry, it's people that I'm trying to make this work financially. For the most part, for cutting horse people, it's, this is my hobby and I love it.